And remember, this is the words that are going to be up on the screen, of course, for us to go through and see. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, <clears throat> says, again, so we had already heard something before about the kingdom of heaven, if you go back to the beginning of chapter 13, but it says, and again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Chapter Titus and Timothy. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Lastly, Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 21. Next to the last chapter of the Bible. Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Revelation chapter 21.
And I thought to myself, Lord, if I could find me some Elsie chocolate milk. There's nothing wrong with Mayfield. It's all right. And Publix milk and all that. But for me, you know, and I don't know if it's something about the, what they do with the Dutch chocolate. I didn't even try Promised Land Midnight Child. That's all right, but there's something, I don't know, to Brother Robert and my taste buds with Borden Dutch. I don't know what the Dutch do to it, but whatever it is, I like Dutch chocolate. So after driving last week some almost 300 miles, I found a grocery store, much like a store we ever called Ingalls. And I went into Ingalls, and they didn't have the Borden milk. I said, well, Lord, I know it's got to be up there somewhere. I saw the Creamy. So I go on up the street and they have another grocery store there called Bilo. I walked oh, into yeah. Bilo. And I didn't understand a lot of those brands at all, but I right. did see right. board milk. Now they had pet milk up right. there. Anybody heard of pet? Uh -huh. So I said, Lord, I will just go just a little piece further. I got to a Walmart. And I said, well, might as well go give them a chance as well. Walked into Walmart and lo and behold, what did I find but a quart of board Dutch chocolate milk. Well, actually, I took this picture back in my hotel room and showed my wife, because bless her heart, she thinks her husband has this weird little song going on in my head, but the things it takes to bring us joy. Uh -huh. So I got back, and I was excited, and I sent my wife a text, and I said, baby, look what I found. Borden, Dutch chocolate milk, and guess what? It only cost me $1.98. Why? Because just like in Texas, they don't charge tax on our food. So my receipt said $1.98. That's the price it said on the on the, in the milk cooler, and that's what I paid. So, the next morning, I was planning on drinking that milk next morning for breakfast. So I got up Thursday morning, headed from South Carolina, going on up into North Carolina, got on I-85 North, and I looked over, because I put the milk in the freezer, I like it real cold, put it in the freezer that morning, about 15, 20 minutes, so it doesn't quite freeze, but it gets good and cold. That's the way I like it. And I looked over in the cup holder in my Ford van, and I said, man, that chocolate is sure looking good. Started to have a couple little sweat beads come down, it, and I said, hmm, I think it's time to get out. So I cracked open that quart of board. And I shook it up first, cracked open that quart of milk. And as I began to drink it, the sun was coming up as I was heading up I-85. And I just, just, just smiled, got over me. I looked like the Kool-Aid man, y'all. <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> Seriously. This chocolate milk headed up I-85 North. And I just happened to look down. And my old dollar in my van told me that I had driven from here in Georgia 297.3 miles to the point where I was on my trip. Now, that entire trip was over 700 miles when I got back to Georgia, but that far, I had gone 297.3 miles. And I thought, I was, I was excited, I was joyful, I was feeling good, right, drinking my milk, and I said, Lord, have mercy. I said, look at me, Father. I'm excited and joyous being 297.3 miles away from my home, spending $1.98 to get a quart of chocolate milk, and it's bringing me joy. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it, you know what? Eventually, and I did, I drunk that milk up pretty big. That quart didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. And after I drunk all the milk up, and I turned it up and got every little drop I could, <laughs> yeah, out of that milk, it was all gone. And I thought, I said, Lord, 297. So, Lord, you mean it took me five, about five hours, doing about 60 or so, mm -hmm. okay? 60 miles per hour. So, Lord, about five hours away from my home, and a dollar and 98 cents brings me joy, I said, God forbid. I said, I was excited. I was happy. And I told my wife, I said, that may have made this little trip maybe worthwhile. Just I found a little ray of sunshine right. on this three-day journey because I found me some boredom Dutch chocolate milk. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it. I said, Lord, I, said, I, I appreciate that. I said, Lord, how sad that something this simple can bring me this type of joy when as a believer, I should have joy anyway. Right. Because the thing about it, what I call joy was really more than likely happiness. Why? Because after the milk was gone, the whole rest of the trip, I looked over my cup holding those empty Dutch chocolate milk bottle with nothing in it. And all I had was what? Memories. Mm -hmm. Amen. That lad that lingered a little bit of, mm, if I could try to taste it before I ate something else, on my palate. But I said, Lord, it's amazing. 297, this many miles away from home, spending less than $2, brought me a bit of joy. I said, but Lord, I can have a joy in spite of all that. But it's amazing to know that for a lot of people in our world today, things quote unquote, bring us joy. Yeah. You know, for somebody else, it may be this amount of this, they take a cruise, okay? And it may be XYZ miles plus a flight and calling a cruise is going to equal joy to them. But let them get out on one of those ships just last week. Two people fell off again yeah. looking for them. Oh, a month or whatever ago, a ship, this go down, and people get to all this other kind of stuff, things that will, quote unquote, bring us joy. Okay. But as a Christian on this morning, we want to look and see the type of joy we want to have. So this morning, looking at for the joy. Now back to the scripture. 
I, I really kind of got upset with myself, and I said, Lord, look at this. I done got way up here and allowed this little milk. You know, it's, it's exciting, but Lord, this ain't really no joy. But I got excited and made it worthwhile. That little bitty something was little, whatever I needed to kind of get me over to get me back home. But notice the scripture now. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Christ is speaking. And this is the parable of the hidden treasure, as it's called. One verse, and Jesus says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. Let's stop right there. Treasure. When I think about treasure, I'm sorry, I always think of a big old pirate map with a big X marks the spot. You know, when I think of treasure, I see the wooden chest with the gold doubloons right. and the jewels and whatever else is in it. But when I think of treasure, but generally speaking, a treasure is what? It's hidden. It's hidden. Whether down in the ground, whether in a cave, it's hidden away because it has some value. And if you got something like that, you don't just want everybody coming and reaching through what? Grabbing and digging in your treasure. It's not a candy bowl, right? No. If you had old Blackbeard or Bluebeard or what is it, what is my man named Johnny Depp in that movie? What's his name? Uh, yeah. Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow, yeah. Jack Sparrow the pirate. If he had a treasure, he wouldn't just leave it out in public view for folks to walk through. Oh, I need some spare chain. I'm going to buy me a coat. Cling, cling, and there's a doubloon. For you know what? He'd have what? No treasure. But because that treasure was important to those pirates, they took that thing and hid it and would give them directions and instructions on what? How to get back to it when they need it. Now notice this. So the kingdom of heaven being likened unto a treasure, something that is valuable, okay? Whatever that treasure may be, okay? Whether it's money, gold, whatever. But notice, it's likened to a treasure, notice, hid in a field. The which when a man had found, look, he found a thing. And what did he do? He went and hide. He went and hide. He hid it, and then for the joy thereof, because he got excited, he had found this treasure. Look at what he does. He goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. What makes that field valuable to him? What's there in it? The treasure. The treasure. What he treasures there. But notice the scripture says he goes and sells all that he has. Have we this morning, as believers, have we sold out or sold away some things and got rid of some stuff for the sake of the kingdom this morning? Or do we see and realize over there a lot of people will drive by many churches in our nation and world on today and look in and see. They realize there's something special up in there, but they look at what? Keep on going. Yeah. They don't want to sell. And sometimes they're selling of things and doing away with some of what I want to do on Sunday. Well, that's my this day, my that day. Well, now, Lord, I'm going to sell all that. I'm going to put that to the side because I found what? A treasure here in this place. So notice, he says here that when the man finds it, he hides it, and notice, for the joy there, not only does he hide it, being selfish, right? That's not what he's saying, but he is joyful because of what he's found, right? And the right says, say, you know, when you find something like that, you don't just go and take it, right? I know on certain jobs or jobs I've had, when you find something, you can't just keep it. You got to go, like, if somebody works in a hotel, when you leave something behind a room, then I suppose just go and take it. They're supposed to do what? Turn that thing in. See if somebody claims. Then if they don't, then somebody else can have it. When folks leave cars out on the side of the road, they get them big old orange and green stickers showing that vehicle's been abandoned. Police will just go and take it and say, ooh, I, want, I like that car, I'm going to keep it. It has to go through a process, right? And be auctioned off. Somebody has to pay something for it because that, that's worth something to someone. This man, going through a field, says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. He in the field, he finds a treasure, hides it, and then he gets excited and sells all that he has, and then he buys the field. Now this morning as believers, when we do we get do we do we feel any joy? Do we do we get excited about things like that, knowing that Lord I have a treasure? You know, we talk about treasure and earth and vessel, but Lord, do we get excited because when we, when we think about the kingdom of heaven and what we have been exposed to? And knowing where it is, we know where it is. You know, we know that. Because in the beginning of chapter 13, I'm gonna turn right back to verse 1. When Jesus begins, he begins with this parable of the sower. And he says here, at the beginning of chapter 13, verse 3, he says, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places, sun came up and it was scorched, and then they, this, that, and the other. But he talks about this sower. So then he comes through and explains this. Notice in verse 18, he says, When anyone heareth the word of the, the, word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. But he that received the seed, so now he's telling us that when the birds and all this other stuff come to take it away, that's the evil one. But the sower, of course, is who? Yeah, God is a sower, right? And he puts the seed out, right? He goes and does this. So now, 
when he says, and again the kingdom of heaven, he's reminding us again of this treasure, the seed that's going forth. We have the same opportunity, the same duty on today to go out and to sow, right? We're supposed to be going out into the vineyard to reap the harvest because the planting, God has already put what we need here, right? Jesus has already been sent, amen? And as a seed, they put him in the heart of the earth, amen? In a borrowed tomb early Sunday morning, he did what? Rose up. Now he's ascended and gone to glory. And imagine now the joy. We think about the kingdom of heaven, right? We've never been there. Jesus left from heaven, didn't he, somebody? And came. He left perfection and came down here on earth and dwelt among us. Can you imagine the joy and what the fellowship he experienced being with his father in the company of his heavenly father, but having to leave that and he did it for you and I? So much so, notice now in Hebrews 12 and 2 what the Bible tells us about that. In Hebrews 12 and 2, we're reminded that Jesus... Here, says verse 22, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, there again, that was set before him, the joy, why? Why can he have joy? Because he knew where he was going. He knew what was there. We have ideas. You know, we have, you know, the Bible alludes to what heaven is like. We talk about streets of gold, gates of jasper, this, that, and other. It wouldn't matter if I got out there and it was iron gates. Concrete, street, dirt, but it doesn't matter. I will be with God, my Father. Jesus, notice here it says in Scripture, that he, for the, who for the joy that was set before him, guess what, Robert? For the joy that's set before you. Boy, that chocolate milk is all right. But once you drink that up, that thing is gone. You know, a lot of folks look forward to February and March. I'm going to get my income down. I'm going to get this back. Who for the joy, they get that little money, and then what? It's gone. They're right back where they were again. But who for the joy, not the happiness, because a lot of folks get happy on Friday, because it's payday for most of us, first and 15th, right? Or people who get assistance, when them spams, a little happiness, a little joy, but guess what? You eventually spend and run out of those things. But as Christians, we have a goal that's a little further reaching than the day-to-day -day of paycheck to paycheck, than waiting for income tax to come around every year, than waiting, hello, somebody, for Mother's Day to come that one day a year, when, yeah, somebody's going to treat one treat mama good today, but two months ago mama needed something, needed a meal, they were nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to pick my mama and take her out today. I'm going to go to church with her today. Mama would love to see you in church every yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Amen. Not just on Mother's Day. Come on now. Call them sometimes those CME members, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, and sometimes CMEF and a funeral. Be the only time they show up at somebody's church. Jesus, looking ahead for the joy that was before him. Robert, look past that chocolate milk in a 297.3 mile. Guess what? Because as I do this trip, what really ought to excite me, God has given me the strength and ability to do this to support my family. Amen? A lot of people say, well, brother, that's a nice thing. You ought to enjoy the trip sightseeing. Man, look, I'm just thinking I'm away from my family. But guess what? The joy set before me is that I get to eventually turn around and 85 North becomes 85 South. And way down 85 South, I get to Riverdale. And when I get to Riverdale, I get to the Smith family home. When I come in the door, there are five people who are excited to see their father, husband, dad. Amen. So who for the joy before me? Robert, it's not about dealing with what you're dealing with right now. The fact that you have to be away for you today. Look at what you got coming to you, son. When you get back, there's somebody waiting for you. Yes. Robert, you've been on this earth 43 years, son. You've been through a lot in those 43 years' time. Don't know how many more days you have left, but who for the joy that is set? Robert, there is something I have for you. And guess what? For each and every one of us as believers. God has something that ought to excite us. Yes. That brings joy to us. Look at what Jesus, what it says here about him. For the joy that was set before him, guess what? He endured the cross. Sister Smith alluded to that today. None of us want to endure or suffer or put up with anything today. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. Don't want to deal with nothing. Not realizing, Scripture teaches that. If Jesus, y'all, as Christians now, we know this, believing that he was perfect, amen, <laughs> they lied on him, spat on him, they, they whipped him. They tried to trip him up. They yeah. did it. If they did all this to Jesus and he was perfect, That's right. what in the world makes you think? What's the scripture that Remington just read in Luke chapter 15, 1 through 7? Mm -hmm. Talking about rejoicing over one sinner than over all these 99 just. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of folks who think, well, Lord, I'm a just person. I'm this, I'm that. Guess what? Jesus was perfect. Not just just. He was perfect. And the world crucified him. That's it. You're still breathing. Brother, look at it. I'm looking right today. I'm 43. I got 10 extra years Jesus never saw. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. When, we, when, it comes to, when it comes to getting old, Miss Becky, bless her heart, Jesus never got there. You know, you know, we talk about pain, things that we get to experience. And all that. We're going to get to experience some things, but we get to do it with him yeah. because we have the Holy Spirit. Now, amen, I come. But Jesus didn't do that. Lord, I've been given 10 more years. Lord, what makes my life of any more value than 
And I've got these 10 more years. Right. Father, I don't know. But Lord, I'm still here. Why? Looking ahead right. for the joy. Lord, what is before me? Lord, if you give me 43 more years, I'm still living in expectancy. And look, for the joy that is before me. Come what may. World goes crazy. Who got this bomb? Who locked that person up? Who for the joy that was set before him? The word of God tells us he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now. Guess what? He had to go through, y'all, before he get to the sit down at the right hand at the throne of God. But a lot of us want to get, oh, Jesus, and then we ready to go be with God. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You have to go through something. Amen? When you talk about a person's funeral, you get your what? Sunrise, sunset, or born this, born that, with that little dash in between. What you going to do with that thing now? There's going to be some endurance, some suffering, some this, some that. There are going to be some days maybe of happiness, but as Ms. Baker, happiness is an emotion. I could be happy today when I got the chocolate milk, but oh, when it's gone, that same thing that brought me joy, then you curse it because it's empty. It wasn't enough. I should have got a half day. Whatever it is, right? Jesus, looking ahead. Can we do that this morning? Can we look ahead for the joy that is set before? Can we see that and look past the situation and circumstances were? And can we put up with something sometimes? Can we endure just a little something like Jesus did? Endure the cross, despising the shame, so that I can get to heaven, to the kingdom of heaven? That we talked about over there in Matthew chapter 13. Oh, I got the kingdom of heaven. This treasure is great. And I'm ready what? Most of us, when we get a treasure, get a little something, we want to do what? Spend it right now. Grandma, you say that money burn a hole in your pocket, son. They give you a little money for doing a chore. And guess what? Before you can even get the money, keep it in your head. Because you ready to go to the can house and spend it. Can we go to Mox, Amy Moses, 5 and 9? I want to get a toy. That was before Walmart, y'all. Yeah, but you get your, yeah, you go to the five and nine. Amy Moses, Mark, Woolworth, whatever. Walmart, you get your little five dollars and think, oh, I'm finna spin up. You go buy you a pickle, get you a soda, and then you get a little cap gun, and then what? Then your money gone. Just all gone. You're like, Lord, I work or whatever, because we can't hold nothing. We can't look ahead to see. Lord, maybe it's something else I may want or something else I want to do. I'm not going to save it. Yeah, I'm going to go and spend it all right now. Because I want it when? Right now. Damn. Lord, I'm going through this. I don't want to endure. I want to be delivered when? Right, right now. Damn. Hello, Joe. <laughs> How long did he endure? Look at Jesus. I mean, his entire life. Imagine. One of our young people shared this. Imagine the power Jesus had. When Jesus was born as a baby, he still had all the power he had because he was God in flesh. Even as a baby, Jesus still had power to resurrect and raise folk. He could do all that. But imagine him suffering it or allowing there again or enduring Himself to be handled by human beings. Mm. You know, teach me how to walk. Jesus said, like, hey, walk, come on. I create, you know. Right. But he did that. Yeah. How? There again, why did he do it? There again, who for the joy that was sent before him. You ever had a child that you sent something before? And you tell them, baby, don't you mess with that. You know, now if you don't do this, mama going to do whatever. I'm going to be good, whatever. But then you come back and they done took it and wasted it, dug in it, played with it, whatever. Set before him. Jesus had it set right before him. And it didn't tempt him. We're going to sing a song in a little bit. Yield not to temptation. But sometimes that temptation is what gets us right. That's we it. see it right there. Oh, I got to have it. Yeah, right. Oh, it's looking good. I'm right. just going to. Mm. I told you not to drink that. I'm sorry. Mom may have had your own coming, whatever else. But who for the joy that was set before him. Jesus looked and saw her. Because what did Satan do when he was out there in the wilderness? Yes, he did, didn't he? Satan tempted him, didn't he? Just kept on and kept on. Jesus was physically a little weak. He been fasting. Forty days. They don't know how often Satan came and when his curve. During that time, 40 days, cut off from the world, out in the wilderness, no food, just him and God. And here comes the evil one, right? Like we talked about in that parable, the one who come to take the seed up and move it and just try to sit all this stuff before Jesus and get him to reach out and touch him. Just like he deceived back in the beginning, the tempter, right? Jesus, our perfect example, looking past that, for the joy that was set before him. Now let's go to Revelation. To see what it is, because we can now partake in it. When we talk about the joy that is set before Christ Jesus, we get to see now some of what can happen. In Revelation 21, 1 through 4, when we talk about that kingdom, kingdom of heaven, notice verse 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth were passed away. So what we see right now that looks so beautiful, right now on my, my desktop, on my computer, the theme on there is called Windows Clouds. Beautiful pictures of the sky and beautiful pretty clouds and whatever. All that that looks so good right now, there's going to be a new heaven and new earth. All that, the heavens and heavens we see, all that it says is going to pass away. Why? For the first earthly pass away and there was no more sea, won't be no water, nobody drowning, and we're going to cruise, y'all. Look, and I jumped, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, Coming down from God. God prepared is coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. God 
is saying, I got this thing dressed up and looking good. Look at it, check it out all you want. There won't be any problems with it. Mm -hmm. How many times have there been construction jobs or jobs done and we find out the work was shot? Right. People throwing up houses and then the foundation ain't right. Mm -hmm. The house cracking, it's settling. This, that, and other. Got a friend right now back in Texas, bought a house, brand new home nobody ever lived in. These people side of the front, but didn't side the side back of this man's house. Bought his house, and he got to get his own grass for the back. It looked good from the front. But boy, after careful inspection, hey, wait a minute. Whoa, what's up? What's going on here? When God sends us down, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Everything you need is ready. It's all done. Said, comes out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I can remember my wedding day almost 20 years ago. It'll be 20 years, June the 5th. Sister Smith, very nice looking young lady. Boy, when she came down that day, as Pastor Dave would say, it was all dyed, fried, and laid to the side. Everything was working. The dress was working, and this and that, all that stuff. Uh, you know, looking good as a bride coming out of the door, wanted to make a good impression. I tried to clean myself up a little bit. Had a nice little haircut. You know what I'm saying? Had my little tux or whatever. I was ready, right? It wasn't for these other folks around here. Y'all were just witnesses. This was us two coming down this aisle together and going to leave as one. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Robert D. Smith II. But we come in there as two. But we left as one. God sends this city down beautifully adorned as a bride. Seeing that beautifully. I mean, the bride don't look good. You know, they take some, yeah. some ladies and just beautiful. The dress, it's all working together. Yeah. The flowers, the ambiance, the this, the whatever, the arch, all that kind of stuff. It goes together to, make, together to make a beautiful servant. Two lives coming together as one. It says, and God sends her now as a bride adorned for her husband. Look, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them. Imagine that. God being right with us. Right? Jesus' name, one of the names he had is what? Emmanuel? God what? With us. Look at it, it says, And God hmm, himself shall be with them and be their God. And then verse 4. And God shall wipe away. Jesus, now looking ahead for that joy, look at what it says here. God will wipe away all the tears from my eyes. Why? There will be no more death, no more sadness and death. Nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. You know what they're saying? We're going to have joy, 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 joy. That's why Jesus could say, looking ahead for the joy. No more pain? Come on now, I cut the deep. In my thumb last week, it's healing up. That was painful, cutting that thing with a knife. Smash your finger in the door. Oh, arthritis, talk to whatever. No more pain. No more sorrow. Look at that. No more crying. Thank you, cry. You want to God. There'll be none of that anymore in heaven. There won't be any need to have it. It says here, God will wipe away all the tears, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Why? For the former things have passed away. All that is gone. But we got to get through and endure for the joy that is set before us. We want to get here, right? I want to be here. I want to be part of it. I want to be in that new heaven. I want to be with God. Having him right there dwelling with me. Not having to just, I can talk to him personally. Get all my questions answered. And the thing about it, when we go back to my little equation at the beginning, 297.3 miles plus $1.98. It took me that far to get that little bit of joy. And after I had the little milk and whatever, it was gone. But when I get to glory, I can imagine. Because that, that gave me a little joy probably all night. And I thought about it. I was excited when I found it. So much so, y'all saw. I took a little picture and showed my wife. Sent her a text message. I was excited that morning when I got up. I said, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and get it real good and cold. Already wetting my palate, getting ready to drink it. And boy, as it was going down, it just brought back all those memories of, man, I can remember drinking that delicious board milk as a kid, growing up, that shot. All those wonderful things. But after it was gone, that was it. But I can imagine as good as that feeling felt right then, and all the memories it brought back, I guarantee you when I get to glory, that won't compare. When I get to heaven, and where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, when all that's gone, man, that thing is shot, whatever. I guarantee you when I'm in heaven less than five minutes, even though that trip would have taken me about five hours to drive all those miles, won't matter. 300 miles, please. I don't know the distance from here to heaven. But when I get there, the joy that I experienced with just all the, everything that brought me, quote unquote, joy, happiness on this side, can't compare. Because this is what's said before me. I get to see Jesus. I can tell him thank you in person. I get to see God the Father and see all the other saints. What a wonderful thing that God is doing for us. But we got to endure. Despite we got to get past of all this kind of stuff. And when we have that treasure, like the one who went, we have to sell all for it. Lord, I have to do away with some of this other stuff that would satisfy me or that I think would bring me joy or happiness on this side, Father, because happiness just isn't enough. Look, in our closing thought, that's what we look at up here. Choose joy.
because happiness isn't enough. Nehemiah 8.10 says like this. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sorry. Why? For the joy of the Lord. Not the happiness of the Lord. But it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Guess what? If this joy is set before me, and then the joy in the Lord is my strength, see, that's, that's how I can endure. When you find somebody that don't want to put up with nothing, they don't really have the joy of God there. Because that's what I, that's what my strength is. How could Jesus be up there on that cross and allow them folks to do that to him? Because the joy of the Lord was his strength. How could he stand up there or stand up there? How could he be pinned to that cross and look down and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do? Because the joy of the Lord was his strength. Not happiness, that's the emotion that changes. The joy of the Lord, he had it all his life. We need to have that joy that will strengthen us from the inside out in our life. For what's set for us, for you and I, because it says from the MIT, the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's why our strength is on. Joy in God. Okay. Next, yield not to temptation. Scripture passes 1 Corinthians 10, 13 on today, which says, somebody read it, please. There has no temptation taken. Go ahead. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will suffer you, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. Amen. That's what this little photo depicts, of course. A way of escape. Folks, that crack in the door, take it. You know, get on out of there. Temptation comes up, move it. Because we have joy at what? That is said before. Lord, I don't want to be tripped up and tempted in none of this. So yield not to temptation. 